Hello lovely viewers, I'm a model of a modern Major Jacob. And I'm a quintessential Dave. And today we are taking a look at these little things, mechanical key switches. Yes, if you're in need of a crash course in key switches, then you've come to the right place. By the end of this video, you'll know everything you need to know to buy a mechanical keyboard with confidence, or even kickstart a keyboard collection. Let's get to it. So let's get started with the very basics. Mechanical keyboards are built with these little things called key switches, a self-contained mechanism that outputs a signal when the key on your keyboard is pressed. Yeah, essentially a keyboard's keycap fits snugly into the stem. When depressed, the stem slides into the keycap housing and pushes one piece of metal contact into another. This completes a circuit and the switch is now in the on position. Once downward force is removed, a spring within the housing then pushes the stem keycap back up, disconnecting the circuit and returning the switch back to the off position. Simple, but not all switches are the same in how they achieve this action, and nor are gamers nimble digits all identical either. Switches are built to accommodate a whole suite of personalities and preferences, and in doing so there are hundreds if not thousands of different key switches in the wild. The three main groups for mechanical switches are linear, tactile and clicky. While switches within these three distinct groups mostly feel somewhat similar in how they feel, variation between key switches can still be monumental. And I'm afraid it's just not that easy to find the perfect key switch. But that's also why mechanical keyboards have created an entire community of enthusiasts rebuilding switches, soldering their own keyboards, and emptying entire bank accounts on custom switch group buys. But who in their right mind would spend so much money on special mechanical switches? I know, it's ridiculous. But before you get into the switches themselves, let's cover the fundamental terms in the switch world. Actuation point, also referred to as actuation distance. This is the point at which a switch actually reports a key press, and is one of the main differences between mechanical switches and membrane rubber dome types. If, you, if say, you only lightly tap a key and nothing happens, it's likely because you haven't put enough force on the key for it to reach the actuation point. That's the point at which switches actuate, or switch from off to on. And that varies from switch to switch. Cherry MX red switches feature a 2mm actuation point, while MX blue switches feature a 2.2mm action point. Both bottom out at 4mm, which is their total travel distance. So rubber dome switches, on the other hand, require a key to bottom mount to actuate. That means you have to squish the key right down to its stodgy, rubbery heart to make it work. Gross. Keys with actuation points higher in the travel have started to rise in popularity among gamers. Cherry now produces the MX Speed Silver Switch with a 1.2mm actuation distance and a 3.4mm total travel distance, while Carl also produces its own speed switches with 1.1 to 1.4mm actuation points and 3.5mm total travel. Onto the three distinct groups of key switches. If you've ever had a go on a gaming keyboard during your long gaming tenure, there's a pretty good chance you've experienced a linear type switch. These switches are often utilised in gaming keys for their smooth and uninterrupted key travel. These are often touted as the best switch for gaming on this fact alone, which we hardly disagree with as a rule, but for some they will find the lack of distinct bumps or clicks the best for rapid fire and responsiveness in game. The most famed of which is the Cherry MX Red Switch. Cherry are well renowned in the keyboard world and its switches go out to many a keyboard manufacturer. But they aren't the only key switch manufacturers around. Nope, they have some incredibly stern competition from the likes of Kale and Gatoron, with the Kale Red, Gatoron Red and Kale Speed Silver switches just to name a few. Luckily, to cut the confusion and try to make things a little easier, many of these keyboard manufacturers retain the same naming scheme for their similarly designed switches. That means Kyle Reds, Gatoron Reds, Cherry MX Reds are all pretty similar, and so are many others. It's not a rule, however, and you know what they say when you assume you make an ass out of you and me. So always do your research. Yeah. Another common linear switch is the Cherry MX Black. This is a little heavier switch than the Cherry MX Red, and takes a little more force to activate. That's kind of my favourite too. Tactile switches feature a bump somewhere within the key switch travel. Usually this resides near the top of the key press, after a short distance known as the pre-travel. This switch makes little audible noise during the bump, yet will be noticeable even if only minutely to the user through touch. Yeah, and tactile switches are extremely popular, and are often touted as the perfect blend between linear gaming prowess and typing moxie. This has made them a pretty popular choice among gamers and typists alike, so you can find a heap of tactile switches on the market, from Cherry MX Brown and Clear, Kale Brown, Speed Copper, Brown Box, Gatoron Brox, Utamu Brown, Novel Keys Box Royals, among other unique switches, and even Logitech's own Roma G Tactile, to name but a few. Just You're spoilt for choice when selecting the perfect lumpy switch. 
Clicky switches, now we're talking. The transcendent, preeminent, unrivaled champion of switch technology. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're, they're fine. What the hell, man? Well, they're, they're just, they're, they're really loud and the click is just, you know, unnecessary. It feels wrong, it's just like gritty and uh. You're wrong. But before we get into all that, let's actually explain what clicky switches are. As you may have already guessed, clicky switches, well, they click. If you've ever had just sat back and thought, I wish everyone still used typewriters, then this is the switch for you. Essentially, the clicky switch offers both the tactile feedback in both the key feel and the racket it makes when you type on them. That means every time you press the switch, there's a loud snap will occur at close to the actuation point. This is achieved through various mechanisms within the switch. Some offer a single click after the downward keystroke, while others offer an audible clicking noise on both the downward and upward keystrokes. A few clicky switches from days gone even came with speakers to mimic that satisfying click. So gross. So weight also plays an integral part in how a switch feels, and is largely determined by the spring used within the key switch itself. This is measured in centinewtons, or CN, or simply the interchangeable grams. Switches largely lie somewhere within the 45 grams to 100 gram range, although the latter is a seriously heavy switch, and you have to really force that down. When it comes to linear switches, force required to bottom out the switch is pretty uniform across the board, but tactile and clicky switches often require more or less force depending on how far through a key press you are. To make all this a little easier, most manufacturers produce force curve graphs. The top of the line indicates downward force of the key press and the other the upward force as the key switch resets. A linear switch will show an almost straight line that gently increases in force as the spring is depressed. Tactile and clicky switches on the other hand will show a sudden bump or fluctuation in force just before the actuation point and on reset. You don't have to start diving into graphs and spring weights just to get a good board, however. Most gaming boards feature pretty similar Cherry MX switches or MX clones, and these are pretty much limited to 40 gram to 50 gram range, which is a great average weight to get started at. But if you ever want to get that perfect custom board, you know where to start. Sound is such an important factor when it comes to picking a keyboard, and most of the noise is generated by the key switches in the workings, or Jacob messing around on keyboards. Some keys are better for noise sensitive locations than others. That means you might be better off with a linear switch for late night gaming than some ludicrously loud click bar switches that feature double the satisfying clickiness. Let's take a listen. Don't worry if that's too loud for you, you don't have to settle for a rubber dome just yet. O-rings are tiny rubber sound dampeners that, while dulling the crisp and responsive feel of a mechanical key a little bit, aid in keeping the din of mechanical switches to a minimum. And Cherry, among others, also makes silent variants of its popular key switches. These silent switches are available in either red or black variants from Cherry, and come with little in-housing rubber dampening measures to help keep the noise down. Most key switches on the market come equipped with Cherry MX mounts to attach the keycap securely on the switch. This cross design, championed by Cherry, is by far the most popular keycap mount on the market today, but it's not the only one. Yeah, the benefit of the Cherry mount is that you can find new keycaps very easily. Most custom keycap sets are built with this design in mind, but that doesn't mean you can always guarantee an easy swap. Some keyboards, such as Corsair's lineup, feature non-standard bottom rows, so the spacing between the key switches won't always fit custom keycaps. Logitech has its own key switch, Roma G, and its own keycap mount. That means unless you find some other Roma G switches out in the wild, you likely won't be able to replace these keycaps down the line. And the same goes for a bunch of other switch designs too, so make sure to check the mount design if you're a sucker for the aesthetic. Well, that just about covers the basics. There's a whole world out there of custom key switches we could never give justice to in a single video. That means we had to miss out on the likes of the Mass Drop Halo switch, the Meme switch itself, Holy Panda, Novel Keys Box switch, the Zelios switch, the FlareTech Analog switch, the gorgeous FlareTech Analog switch, which can change the actuation distance at the press of a button, and low profile switches from Cherry and Kale and the famed Top Brace switch. Jeez. But nevertheless, we hope our guide on our key switches has clicked for you. Yeah, nearly made it to the end. If you've enjoyed the video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Also check back on PCGamesN.com for more from us too, and also a bunch of gaming news, reviews, and more from those lovely people behind us. Yeah, thanks for watching. Bye!